Following three recent camera purchases and three returns, I've decided to just rekindle my feelings for the camera I already own. I just traveled to Arkansas to visit my dad. He can't get around so well anymore, so I was just taking some photos in his backyard uh, for his benefit, not trying to make art here. Although, yeah, I got a little artsy because I can't help myself. But these are just JPEGs straight out of camera, just with the built-in Canon in this case. Color profiles already installed on the camera. I've gone through a little bit of a classic DSLR phase lately. Didn't work out, sadly. I really wanted it to. But one of the things I was doing was shooting a lot of JPEGs straight out of camera. Here I try to just go back to editing like I used to. In this case, in an app or a Lightroom plugin called Dehancer. And that's cool. I mean, they're definitely more interesting when I edit them in Dehancer, but I also sort of feel like, you know, life's too short. I don't really like editing, and I do really like shooting, so... JPEG straight out of camera appeals to me for that reason, most of all. But also, I just like the idea of getting it right in camera. And more than that, just being okay with what you got. I'm a film shooter as well, and that's a big part of shooting film, and that was a big part of my motivation for um, my time spent looking for a great classic DSLR. And even though I didn't find it, um, that experience was kind of invaluable. Can't explain how weird it is to just be walking around here so close to where I grew up. So let's fall back in love with the camera we already own. I'm going to start by buying some color profiles to install on my camera. Going forward, I'm going to call this profile Profile 1. I'm going to call this one Profile 2. I bought both of those. <sighs> kind of expensive, as you can see. At that price, they better be good. And then I downloaded this one as well. My camera holds three profiles at a time. I didn't buy this one because you get to name your price. If I like it, I will absolutely come back and pay for it. Even if I like it a little. I mean, if I'll ever use it again. This is profile two, which I didn't end up using much. I immediately determined that I didn't like it that much, although uh, it was all right. I, uh, I think it's just not a good general purpose profile. But like for these ones, it worked okay. I don't like how gray the blacks are. I really prefer deeper blacks. I mean, I like the idea of bringing the blacks up ever so slightly, having them clip before absolute black, but just barely. I think that gets just very overdone though in every preset pack you see available for purchase. I think because it's just an easy thing as a creator of a Lightroom preset pack or a picture profile. It's an easy thing to include where it's going to trigger in a certain amount of people that, like, oh hey, that looks kind of filmic thought. And it does look kind of filmic to have your blacks be a little more gray. But it also just sort of looks overdone and obnoxious. I like it in theory. I just don't like it to this degree. And unlike a Lightroom preset, that sort of thing, these picture profiles are locked. I can't change it. So I'm stuck with this profile now. Well, two of them where I can't restore the blacks. And that fucking sucks. Uh, otherwise, I like this profile. This number one profile, I'm digging it. Minus the gray blacks. So, I feel pretty stupid now for spending, what, like 50-something bucks for two, I was gonna say shitty profiles. They're not shitty, but for two profiles that I don't love that much. I mean, uh, and probably won't use that much. But I'm not gonna be deterred that easily. I'm gonna keep going. The other thing I was doing, in an effort to fall back in love with the camera I already own, was use the viewfinder more. Uh, the tactile nature, the less... 
technology between you and your camera that I experienced during my little classic DSLR phase the past month or two that I've gone through made me realize I just need to use the viewfinder more. It makes a difference. I, I also like having the screen. There are times when it's super convenient. I can get a low angle, I can get a high angle, and that's fabulous. But if I don't need that, uh, I made a concerted effort to use the viewfinder. Because for the entire life of this camera, I've had it, I don't know, five years, I never used the viewfinder, like literally not ever. Always used the screen. And I think that has killed the joy for me. So, viewfinder it is until there's a reason to switch to the screen. That's my new rule. I emailed the creator of these two color profiles and asked if I could just get a custom version with deeper blacks. I said, okay, fair enough, I understand why you don't open it up for editing. Because then someone could just steal the recipe, sell it as their own. But it seemed like a reasonable request to just, could you modify it and send me a modified version? That was a few days ago. So far I haven't heard back. Maybe I still will. Kinda doubt it, but maybe I still will. I am sort of weighing in my mind whether I might want to consider just going back to the stock Canon profiles. Because all of these kind of look over-processed to my eyes. Which just runs counter to the entire concept of shooting JPEG straight at a camera. And it's sort of the worst of both worlds, where your images are not benefiting from the editing process, and yet they look over-processed. Anyway, I'm gonna see what I can do, see if I can live with it. I still have that other profile to try. Will I download more and try those? I doubt it. I, I think I can get a good idea of whether or not this is the correct direction for me just with the three that I already have. This battery grip I've been using, I bought that a few months back with the intention of increasing my love for the camera I already own. Didn't really work, though I do like using it. The camera was a bit small for my hands, not to mention a bit awkwardly weight distributed. Didn't like that front heavy feeling where the lens weighed significantly more than the camera body. You know, these profiles are actually growing on me. Somehow my eyes have adjusted, adapted. I don't know, if only I could back off these not really black blacks, like 50 to 60% though. But I'm just retreading ground, restating what I've already stated. But true enough, I am liking them a little more the more I use them, just getting used to them. And I switched back to that Profile 2, thought it might suit these kind of conditions, and sure enough, I think it did. I think under the right circumstances, Profile 2 is pretty good. There was nothing exciting about the color of these buildings, and I actually think it added something. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Kudos, Profile 2. Kudos. You know, the wife actually gave me permission to buy a new camera, like a legit current camera. And I got close a couple of times. I was looking at Canon cameras, I was looking at Sony cameras. Even was looking at Fuji cameras, though that would be a less likely purchase on my part. But there are some great cameras out there from all manufacturers. Most interested in a Canon R5, though. Um, it's really cheap right now. And that's because an R5 II release is probably imminent. And uh, I'm interested in the Mark I. I'm interested in waiting to see what the Mark II is. 
But really, the more I considered it, the more I didn't see the point. Like, yes, it will have marginally better everything than what I have currently, but is that really the problem? Won't it basically be the same thing? Like a box upon which to attach lenses and point at things? Capture images? I mean, what am I really getting that I don't have now? And the answer I keep coming back to is nothing. I won't be able to do anything I can't do now. I will have just spent thousands of dollars. That's not the answer. I'm not saying I won't upgrade my camera. At some point I will. Maybe even soon. Maybe not though. Maybe not for years. Appreciating what I already have. That's what I need to be doing. When I say need, it, it almost implies that I don't want to, but that's what I want to do. That's the path that makes sense to me. It's so fucking spoiled. I think we're all just insanely spoiled. This area where I'm shooting, Pettigean Mountain. I came here when I was a kid with the family. I also came here as a kid with my fifth grade class. My mom came along on that trip with my fifth grade class, which you might think was embarrassing or something. It wasn't at all. It was lovely. Now, I was never embarrassed of my parents when I was a kid. I was more embarrassed of my dopey classmates. Like, I swear, Mom, I'm not as stupid as they are. I don't behave like an ignorant asshole and you're not around, I promise. They don't represent me and what I'm about. So, I've been doing it a lot lately, but once again I was thinking about my mom while I was taking these pictures. Remembering that trip. Are there any bad DSLRs or mirrorless cameras? I mean, I could easily just go back to my first one that I bought 20 years ago, and I still wouldn't be missing anything. It would still be able to do everything I need it to do. So again, just what the fuck are we doing? But yeah, video is its own thing. I'm certainly only referring to stills, which is mostly what I care about. I do appreciate some great video specs, but I am a hybrid shooter, but hybrid in the sense of like 91% stills and 9% video. But sure, I appreciate good video specs, I do. So now I'm switching to Profile 3. I believe this is the first time I used it. It's the one that I didn't pay for, but I will come back and pay for it if it ends up working for me. If I think I'll ever use it again post making this video, then I'll go pay for it. Looks okay. Looks uh, similar to Profile 1, but a little more saturated. Uh, bolder colors. I mention it entirely too frequently, but I do just need to mention that I'm colorblind, so... Speaking with authority about the nuances of color is something I'm not going to be able to do. Also, that's why I bought some picture profiles, because I can never really trust myself making color decisions, not fully. And that sucks, by the way. So, I... I am also bummed that this picture profile has kind of the gray-black thing going on. It's just, why is that so common? I mean, I do like it. I like it, and then my eyes have adjusted to that look, and so it's fine. But I don't want to settle for gray-blacks. I want deeper blacks. Anyway, this profile is also locked, so I can't edit it. Which, fair enough. I mean, I didn't even pay anything for it, but... I mean, I'd be willing to drop a hundred bucks. Just let me edit the fucking profile. It's, I don't know. This is very frustrating. I mean, yes, fair enough on both websites. There were other profiles to choose from. Maybe there were ones with deeper blacks. I wasn't really specifically looking for that. I mean, now I wish I had been. In retrospect. 
I was just looking for something that jumped out as cool. Anyway, it's hard to tell when you're looking at a profile or a preset on somebody else's image with a different shooting style and different conditions or, you know, they're picking photos that are ideal for that profile and so it doesn't really give you a good indication. Uh, or maybe it does if you're smart, which would instantly disqualify me. You know, there are all sorts of ways that one could revitalize interest in the camera they already own. Things that I didn't really try, but, you know, buying a new lens is a great way to do that. And buying a vintage lens, that's one of the great advantages of shooting with a mirrorless camera, is you can adapt pretty much any lens to it. I do sometimes shoot on vintage lenses. And maybe I will look into getting a vintage lens. Not while I'm out here visiting my dad. And potentially not at all. I was really thinking more about subtracting rather than adding in order to accomplish this goal. Um, something that didn't cost money or ideally very little money, if any. Simplifying, back to basics. I kind of suspected that the um, picture profiles weren't going to work out if I'm being entirely honest with you. Because I do loathe that overly processed look. And why would you buy a picture profile that looked exactly like something straight out of the camera? You wouldn't. Um, but I guess that's what I was looking for. Something that looked a little more straight out of the camera, but that had some personality to it. But I don't think I'm going to find that unless I make it myself. I really think, and this solidifies it for me, that JPEG straight out of camera with the stock picture profile built into my camera is going to be the way to go for me. And maybe it's just an attitude. You know, I baby my camera way too much. I need to really treat it as a tool. I never had that problem before. All my old hefty DSLRs from the 1D series from Canon and the 5D series from Canon. Never babied those. I mean, I didn't go out of my way to be abusive, but they got smacked around in the course of normal use. I just didn't worry about it that much. This one feels so delicate, maybe. I mean, that screen that hangs off feels like a hazard. You know, feels like it could snap right off. And the lenses, the, the new RF lenses are, are so purdy. Maybe I'm afraid to scratch the casing. I, you know, that's not it. It's not that they're purdy, it's that they're so fucking expensive. So I really kind of fucked up and climbed somewhere I shouldn't. And I really struggled to get down from these rocks. I didn't film it, which might seem weird. I just have a thing where watching myself almost die is not fun. <laughs> Which, I mean, that might not seem weird, but I don't know. I got in a horrible bike wreck one time, and at least it looked horrible. It was very dangerous. I came very close to death, but I was fine. I got very lucky. But I remember thinking, oh, it's worth it because I got GoPro footage of it. And I went back and I looked at the footage and I just thought, yeah, I don't want to look at that. That's awful. I almost died. So that was a thing I didn't know about myself, that I learned about myself about four years ago, that I don't want to see video of me almost dying. Hey, you got to learn these things. You're not born knowing. I also learned within the last handful of years that in some kind of weird, twisted way, I like going through surgery. I, know, it's <laughs> I think it's some deep psychological problem. Like that was my biggest fear my whole life. And then once I conquered it, I think I just get a thrill out of the fact that I'm not terrified of it anymore. So it, f it feels like an accomplishment every time. If I were to get a new lens, not a vintage lens, but a new, new lens, I think it would be to replace this 100 millimeter macro lens. I like this lens, but it is not a premium lens. And sometimes I feel that that's really apparent. Not when doing macro shots. Always looks great for macro photography. When I use it for portraits, and 100mm 2.8 should be a great focal length and, and aperture for portraits, I feel like that's when it really shows that it's not a premium lens. 
So I'd like it for its macro capabilities, that is, I'd like to upgrade to the RFL version of this lens. But I'd also like it just because I like that focal length for portraits and for shooting mountains far away. 100 millimeters, that's a great focal length. Frequently 200 is way too much. But I have a 200 millimeter lens that I really like and, and have no desire to replace. In a sense, I feel like I'm kind of unlucky that I favor 50 millimeter as my main focal length because it's kind of nebulous as to what is your second lens in a two camera setup. I switch back to color profile one here. I feel like if you love the 35, your path is clear. Your second camera should have an 85. And if you love the 85, just vice versa. Have a 35 on your second camera. But if you love a 50 millimeter as I do, eh, 35 is kind of similar. It's not really worth it to carry around a 35, let alone buy one. Same with 85. It's just too similar to 50. It's not different enough. So then you're faced with like, do you go wider? I mean, sometimes I want to shoot wide, but not that much. So like a, a 24 millimeter prime. I wouldn't use it that much. It's not that I don't want one, I just wouldn't use it that much. So for me, going the other direction makes more sense in a two camera setup. My second lens, that is my second camera, would be sporting a 100 millimeter lens with macro capabilities. It is different enough. It looks significantly different from a 50 millimeter lens, plus macro. And I'm always thinking in terms of weddings. That's how I've made the majority of my money as a pro photographer. So macro lenses are definitely, I won't say a must at weddings, they're not a must, but a huge help, yes. The allure of higher resolution sensor, I feel it, but I also know it's pointless. The allure of in-body image stabilization, so cool. Probably a must if you're a video shooter primarily. For stills, no. It'd be nice to have, I guess, but I don't need it. I mean, I have fast lenses and, I don't know, a lot of experience. Coming back with motion blur is not a problem I really face in particular. But better autofocus comes a little bit closer to hitting the need category for me. This particular camera, the EOS R, um, wedding receptions, that's a bit of a struggle. While it can focus just fine in the dark, normally, grabbing a moving subject, like on a dance floor in the dark, it's fucking impossible sometimes. So here I switch back to just the stock Canon picture profile. I believe I used the landscape profile, just so it would give me a tiny bit more color, but... Um, you know, the funny thing is they don't really look that different. The blacks don't particularly seem that deep. So, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just really overthinking all of this. Maybe I just need to go back to my old workflow that served me so well for so many years. Just shoot in RAW, edit in Lightroom, be done with it. I don't know. I'm more confused than ever, honestly. More confused than ever.